evening. On behalf of the Agora team, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this new iteration of the Agora talk. I'm super excited to welcome you tonight for our last talk with the visionary founder of Gazelli Art House, Mila Askarova, and the brilliantissima artist, Claudia Hart. And to moderate this evening, we have our wonderful Isabella Helms, and I'll hand it over to you, Bella. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Tonight, I'm really excited to introduce to you Claudia Hart and Mila Askarova, who are here to discuss Claudia's current show at Gazelli Art House and Imaginary Ruin. Claudia Hart is an artist and associate professor of film, video, new media art at the School of Art Institute of Chicago. With a background in art history, she has also worked as an art, art critic and as a background also in architecture. Hart creates liminal spaces and uses them to explore nature and the body collapsing into technology and then back again. Hart spaces encompass a notion of fluidity, creating environments where social constructs and expectations vanishes into the techno technological void. Known as a pioneer of virtual imaging and being one of the first women to work in this medium, Hart's work over the years has shown that digital art is not a man's world. Mila Askarova founded London's Gazelli Art House in 2010 to, um, to accompany its already existing Baku Gallery. Since then, the gallery has represented a range of international artists at the gallery's permanent residence in Dover Street. In 2015, the Ga Gazelli Art House announced a new branch of the galley, gallery, Gazellio, a digital art space that would champion the work of digital, VR and AR artists through online residencies. Tonight we have an exclusive preview of An Imaginary Ruin, um, accompany, accompanying, which accompanies the physical show at Gazelli Art House. Um, so we have a clip for you in Mozilla Hubs that Claudia and Mila have already made. Um, I don't know if you want to introduce the clip before we show it, Mila or Mila or Claudia. Um, we could do. We could have thank you, first of all, for having me and for having us um, talk about the, the the show and the work that Claudia has done. Um, the What you're, I guess, about to see is basically a virtual um reproduction of the physical space at the gallery or at least half of it is you'll see there are two different environments that claudia has has created um one of which is you know physically viewable at the gallery on dover street and in, in the basement space which um we've kind of taken over only a few weeks ago so this is the very first show that has launched the space in a way um and where i can tell you a bit more about you know our plans for it and 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 how it all links with Gazelio, the digital residency, which is how we met with Claudia uh, in March last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, Claudia, do you want to give a quick intro on, on what what we're about to see? Um, yeah, we're about to see something that's a new platform for VR. So it's a, a social VR. So that means it's a combination between Facebook or whatever your preferred social media is and an environment. And it's still in a, in a beginning phase. So it looks like early games really. And this little clip is taking place between Mia, Mila and I um, as a robot, as a, um, Wait, were you a dino or a, what were you? I was a bat. Right, I was as a bat, a bat. <laughs> this one. Right, it's a bat and a candy corn um, meeting in a kind of cartoon version of the Gazelli Gallery, which was made to scale, including the upper floor. Um, so that's it. That was really great. And I really loved seeing you as a bat and a candy corn. I think <laughs> that really <laughs> well that's what we were actually talking about with claudia is is it's 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 fun how you can have you know quite meaningful conversations with this various kind of avatars and and you know it it definitely adds i think a fun um experience uh the idea that you know you've got all this artwork around you you've got the environment and you can have a, a, a conversation with various kind of avatars Absolutely. And it is so social. So when you're inside, when you move closer to someone, you can hear them more intensely and you can move away and break off into groups and have conversations like you're in a real space. Um, and I think that's really what social VR is about. So 
Claudia, places such as Mozilla Hubs are designed to be social spaces um, where you can connect to each other. But I was wondering if you could tell us more about your experience of working with social virtual reality and um, how you found the experience of working in Mozilla Hubs. Mm. Oh, you're still on mute. <laughs> Oh. You're muted again. So I, I've been working with 3D animation, uh, which is the beginning of this kind of uh, work, right? What what Mila shows, uh, virtual reality is another platform for making 3D animation. And in my case, I I I I saw I went to I was in Berlin and I saw the premiere of Toy Story One about 25 years ago and I thought oh wow I, I want to do that and I but I wanted to make it serious art and so I sort of managed to mix the two together so this kind of world is based on building um, sort of like an architectural model except inside a computer it's not real. And as as this this forms uh, uh, um, have I stabilized and research uh, advances on it. First, it enters as VR, where you put the headset on, and um, and there you feel like you're inside it with your body. That you, and then the next step is this: the social VR, which compared to the what we uh, are now experiencing with real VR, where you can get a lot of realism. Um, the social VR like goes back to early cartoons, which is sort of what's fun about it. I, I didn't think I would be so um, enchanted with it. I was invited by Ars Electronica to visualize, to do something with my show in New York. And I, and, and I was given the opportunity to do it on Mozilla Hubs, which I had never heard of before then. This was in September. And I built the uh, environment and I went sort of bananas. It wasn't just me. What I started doing was, it seemed like my full-time job was inviting curators or critics or other artists to my hub in which I couldn't get them to leave most of the time. It, you know, it would be like, let's talk for 40 minutes and 90 minutes later, I'd be like, I have, a, I have to go now. And they <laughs> would leave. And, and this experience, I sort of felt it too. It all became fun. And because you feel you're in there with your body um, and you're, do, you're an active agent, like now we're passive agents with, you know, we're stuck. But there you feel like you're flying and you run around. People get really <sighs> manic and crazy and they laugh a lot and nobody wants to leave. So I realized there was so much power in that. Definitely. Do you think that people act in a different way within the hubs? Because it's so freeing than they do within the gallery Well, space? I mean, I, you're a candy corn or <laughs> a with buggy eyes or, you know, I've enjoyed being a man-eating plant or a spider. And, I do have custom avatars that I've made. Um, and I started um, doing live performance work that use working with live musicians. And I'm going to start working with poets and um, in discussion about opera, actually. Um, and this liveness, you know, in mm. this fantasy world uh, is, the, is, is really sort of remarkable. It does something different. The spontaneity and the feeling that you're in there with your body, it affects you. Yeah. It really does. It really is completely immersive. Um, I wanted to ask you about your use of models and a little bit more about how you create, create your work within these digital forms. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about how you work with models on various different platforms? Um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I, um, I'm a 3D animator. People don't understand that usually because I don't embrace a commercial aesthetic. Um, and uh, so I've been asked, I've been doing this for 25 years and people, I would get bewildered questions from people like, how did you do that? Is Did you make like 
14,000 oil paintings or, and, um, you know, to make an animation, you, you, you go frame by frame. And so I, I, what you actually do, how you do it is it, there's a lot of handicraft in it. It's skill. A lot of people who do this were painters or regular, my best students are actually people who make re started as regular artists. And because what you're actually doing is, although I use a mouse or a tablet to do it, is I do a lot of building, hand, uh, uh, constructing things, as if you're making a, an architectural model. I paint in there. I do everything. Um, like That's why I like Mozilla's hubs. It's like I'm a, a robot in, in a world. And so you build these architectural models that exist in the computer and that set you can use for any number of things so i shoot high resolution movies that's what a pixar movie is you can make a vr game where you put it on a platform that you can access with a headset and the social vr is simple but easy like if you have a computer you don't even need a headset it's a website it's a spatialized website which makes it really inclusive because you can activate it from anywhere and it does it can bring you in from everywhere and it's a way to connect um in a way that you don't have to travel to a gallery but it's also nice to be added on to the gallery experience so what we're finding with your new show the ruins is that we have the physical space and the space in which you and Mila can float around as a candy corner in a bat so it's um really a mix of the experience. I've, I've got, I've had questions from people cause this is, I'm now about finishing my fourth one. And the, uh, um, they've all, all, only this, the one, the house, which is like, I imagine as a nightclub um, is not, well, it's connected to a real house in the real world. And I get questions from people all the time that says, you mean this is real? And I think we do understand the world as existing in the clouds and also on earth now. That is our sense of reality. And the fact that even though it looks very cartoony and simplified, um, when I tell them this is real and it's exactly the same size in the proportions in the real world, there's this complete like delight in that because that's what, how we live now. Absolutely, it really connects us to the experience. Um, so up, we're going to show a clip of the ruins, right? Um, if we could have a little look, I think Mimi's going to play a little clip of the ruins. So we can see what we're talking about is this immersive experience. And after that, maybe we can talk a little bit about the physical exhibition compared to the online Yeah, and I'd like to, it's nice to see it first. And then I'd like to talk a little bit about what 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 Mila was asking me, which sounded very hard abstracted in the crazy world clip that we made, um, which was really a half hour talk, right? Condensed. Mm -hmm. um, it, once you see the movie, you'll understand a little, and I could talk return to the themes of it also. So following from that, which is a great experience, um, I was wondering if you could tell us about the ruins and the ideas behind it and why you wanted to create this um, piece. Okay, somebody asked in the general chat, can anyone build these kinds of models using Mozilla Hubs? Um, Mozilla Hubs is, is a free software and it has preset models, but what I do is I'm building very specific models myself. So I build everything myself. Um, and that, uh, what, so therefore, uh, asking about what's going on in there, what I was thinking about was about, um, history and art history. And, uh, I, I was thinking of this as a kind of, uh, game or that you can't escape from. So I built a labyrinth and the things that are happening in there is I filled it up with handmade models of uh, still life masterpieces by Matisse and Picasso, basically, 
It was almost all Matisse and Picasso. And I took their paintings and I very carefully copied them as sculptures. And then I hand painted, uh, I mean, it's all done by computer, but I feel like I'm, I wiggle my hand around. And, um, and I, I, I um, copy their brush strokes and their palettes. Then I knock them down to a very low resolution because the game world, you can't have a lot of data in it. So they're simplified. And then I brought them into a labyrinth, an actual uh, maze from which there's no mistake, uh, escape. And the wallpaper and the floor coverings we used in our real show, one of them, um, it's actually augmented reality. The one with the squiggles on it was a sort of rip off of Matisse, um, not with Matisse colors. And then when you use a custom app that you can load on your phone that I built, you look and you see these kind of strobing animations that you saw in the house on the hubs, right? The doll's house. It's the same sort of dark messages about uh, uh, corporate takeovers and, and, and empire collapse and all that. The audio, which we didn't hear very well, um, was the central part for me also of the piece. One is these models of, of where I'm playfully forging and uh, making forgeries of Matisse and Picasso as low res game models. Um, but is also the audio where I was reciting from also patriarchal figures of Western culture, um, Thomas Jefferson and a letter on democracy, the Bauhaus Manifesto by Walter Gropius, uh, Henry Ford who made a crazy Fordlandia visionary project on the Amazon River um, at the, uh, in which he, uh, which was a recreation of a Detroit suburb. So. Um, that he had indigenous workers eating forced diet in a forced diet of donuts and hot dogs and hamburgers and french fries. And it was a rubber factory and they all eventually ran away. And the last one was Jim Jones, who was the drink the Kool-Aid guy, who um, everybody, it was an anti-communist Christian cult where they ultimately all committed suicide. It was about a thousand people um, with Kool-Aid poison. And um, um, Ed Campion, who, who is my collaborator in music, made a, a, a software with me performing those voices and then manipulates them like music and plays them. And that's the composition behind it, which we only heard very faintly, I think, because of all the mediation that we're hearing this stuff through, um, but that you can also give a link and see online. But so that we have as a projection and we installed in the real world, the wallpaper. And it also is a kind of image of history as the canons of the masters as a kind of claustrophobic, scary space that there is no escape from. And I think that's how we're all feeling at the moment, at least in the New York art world. <laughs> you know, we feel sort of bad, <laughs> but <laughs> Absolutely, it really does reflect what we're experiencing and where art is going when we're trying to dismantle this notion that the canon of art history is white and male um, and reclaiming it through low resolution copies I think is really clever in the way that we, we can still experience it online um, which is really great and the contrast between the real life show that will be at Gazelli that is at Gazelli at the moment and online is so different, they're two such different experiences. Um, I was wondering actually, Mila and Claudia, if you could talk us through um, the experience you get in the gallery space versus the experience we get when we look at the ruins through an installation or we're on Mozilla hubs and the difference between the two shows. Um, so I think if you come into the gallery space, you're kind of taken downstairs. So there's already that interaction with, you know gallery staff members so just purely kind of on a practical level you you get kind of escorted downstairs and then once you're in the room um the the i guess the, the floor that you see in mozilla hubs is is different and that's pretty much the only thing you still you know you have the the projection in front of you that's the first thing kind of that you see of the video that we've just saw and then immediately kind of at the back of you you've got this augmented reality um wallpaper 
obviously there's you know the 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 whole kind of element of having the the um, android in front of it and that interaction on that kind of level whereas in mozilla hubs it's 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 right there the augmented part is already kind of playing out for you um but uh, in terms of yeah and that's i guess that's why going back to what we were talking about just earlier in terms of accessibility i think that's why maybe having you know both the physical and this virtual display of one show or one body of work or, or one work in this case or, or two works but under kind of one work umbrella in a way um that's why it's quite unique and special and hasn't really been done in the past because i think even with ars electronica they've had you know they the whole claudia right they had they didn't have a physical the physical space exhibition. was in new york yeah the physical space was in new york it wasn't there right and that that i think that the putting together is really it is is somehow um ma- part of the magic because you I try to make my work very emotional to tell you the truth that's what's different about me from most of the digital artists who work in a more conceptual I think it's conceptual what I'm doing but I I I try to I don't care about that part <laughs> what I care about is that it has like an impact on people and that that one is very goth and spooky and claustrophobic and so that what I found is that the the difference in the medium you know the fant the is is you experience it emotionally in very very different ways and when you can immediately switch back and forth and you see that mm-hmm. it, it teaches you things about how we're living now you know and 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 it in the end i sort of it makes me feel that we can't give up you know the physical part of art it's definitely and and i think in in um from from the point of kind of the commercial angle i think it might become a bit more difficult to view an artwork or an installation if it's just in that digital environment in that kind of virtual environment because you it it's the experience itself right that you kind of taken away with and and it's quite difficult to understand that what you're looking at is actually you know for sale and it has an addition number and it's 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 something that you can potentially acquire in the physical space i think we we eliminate that problem it's it's just something which is a bit more kind of clearer in a way so i think again that combination of the two um where you get that experience and the understanding of oh actually this is something you know that you could you could actually acquire that's that's the the kind of um the plus basically of having of having these two um you know displays in a way running parallel to each other but that's a, that's another thing i mean with the beauty with the, with the hubs is that we 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 i mean i guess it's up to us whether we remove the content from there after the show or not but the idea that it can just exist um online even after the physical show is down that there's something to it as well that anyone can wander in there in a few months in a few years down the line and it's it will still be there so in terms of adding that i think historical kind of archiving um element to it is also quite quite an interesting thing um mm-hmm. but yeah but in terms of the physicality nature of it i think yeah we've had the the whole i mean initially before we launched this basement space um we marked our 50th anniversary of enter through the headset shows which have been these group shows that we've been um hosting at the gallery as as part of a, a selection of uh, gazelio residents one of whom of course claudia was 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 part of that residence last year and um uh, and it you know despite re- the restrictions despite going in and out of lockdown here in London we had um uh, in, the, the show was was held in September and we had just under 1000 people physically visiting the show which was by our kind of numbers given the size of our space it's quite a uh, you know a, a decent number of people which kind of made me understand again because it's such a tactile thing of actually putting on the headsets and having that kind of again experience um no one seemed to be so phased about you know the the although we took all the precautions necessary we had you know 
all these kind of um, uh, basically set up in place where all the headsets were sterilized in between each use and the masks and what have you. We, we, we had it all basically, um, you know, properly kind of according to all the guidelines we, we followed. But um, but no one, you know, it, it didn't stop from anyone basically coming into the gallery and having that physical experience, which, which again, going back to what we were saying, whether one can, you know, replace the other i don't think even in in our times that we're going through now but i think it's definitely it kind of almost complements and going forward this is something we absolutely should be i think aware of and pay you know attention to of it's not going anywhere whether it's mozilla hubs or any other kind of you know virtual digital space i think that's something here to stay is just how do we you know, maybe be a bit strategic about it or just generally choose certain projects, certain works that, that can work well within the physical and the digital. I'd like to respond to that because Emma has asked us in a couple of um, questions and also the interaction. In the, there, people are very interested in the combo, if you look in the general chat. Mm -hmm. And I would say that... Um, in in the um in the past uh year i've sold a fair amount of things to institutions and that was an evolving discussion um where i insisted on selling it all as one piece and this to and that so in other words it's one piece the whole thing is one piece. You, if you keep, and my feeling was if you keep it in a box, the headset, and you never look at it, you know it's there. And that knowing um, that things are existing in parallel manifestations is the richness of the piece, I think. And I have seen, Emma asked, do I notice a difference in the way viewers view it? You know. I've had headsets hanging in a space with a surround um, in, in uh, projection. And one is sort of square, the other is round. And I see people go, ah, when they put the, you know, when they go back and forth, because there's something about that that's telling you about the relativity of perception and the limits of the body that is very, you know profound in itself it's actually interesting because i think in this case you view the hardware as part of the installation as part of the work right to a certain degree i think mm -hmm. what we were trying to do with these enter to the headset shows is you know it, it, i think the first couple of years there was definitely that kind of not awkwardness necessarily but you could see that a lot of the audience that were coming through it was their first time experiencing vr you know the headset basically first time putting it on and it was a bit kind of well, how do i do this etc so there was a lot of um guidance that we had to provide but then as kind of years went by i think i mean this this show that just passed it was quite a a, a straightforward fairly smooth experience that people had with each of the works that were on display um in in i think it's interesting once you because with the headsets generally i mean if if it isn't part of the art work itself or the art installation as i guess you're kind of um uh mentioning claudia it's it's um there is something to say as well about making the the presentation i guess to a certain degree the creation of of, of vr works seamless enough where the where the hardware isn't noticed as a screen wouldn't be noticed when you look at a video video work unless again the screen is in a special form you know in a special kind of it, it, it's a special looking type of screen or there's projection that needs to be in a certain kind of way but i think that the the yeah i guess that the hardware that's being used to display the work i guess that's what we were trying to focus on the past few years is the actual vr work itself and regardless of kind of the headset and the computer that goes with it um <laughs> Do you feel that, 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 I mean, I have, I started as a painter and showed work with galleries for 12 years, I think, before I started doing this. And when I look at regular art shows, they seem so naked to me. 
because what because it's just kind of what the, the paintings or whatever it seems very spartan <laughs> like it's missing something <laughs> yeah we need to be able to experience it to get into it well that's the thing i mean one one of the one of the shows i think it was last last one or the year before um we literally we just had uh, the headsets um displayed for one of these centers through the headset uh, shows and nothing nothing else and it was i mean it but that's the thing it's kind of like you could say the same thing with vr works as well right that you walk into a space and it's a bit and there's nothing to see except these uniform headsets but it's it's what happens once you so it's it's a whole different thing i think that you're trying to bring into the physical space by by using anyways it was it was interesting to see the 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 response basically from the audience of of kind of walking into into the space just seeing the headsets versus for example what we've done with you Claudio on one of the um installations where we had the i mean even with this current show um where we have the there's more components to it and it's more of an immersive experience without even the headset in the picture kind of thing which is i think what's different with 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 you and and what's quite admirable is that you the the experience starts as soon as you walk into the space and then the headset is kind of a part of it which adds an additional space kind of takes you even further into that whole you know the digital kind of environment the virtual environment um so there's kind of like a couple of layers i guess um but yeah i mean it's just i feel like it's just a matter of the intention probably of what we you know what what the show intends to do and how right and what the intention is to how do you want to communicate with or relate to the audiences and how do they what would be i think from our end what i find myself time and time thinking about exhibiting vr works is how do we make it as easy as possible for the viewer let them come in and 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 almost kind of you know limit the interaction with 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 gallery staff as well as in if they you know as you'd expect someone to walk into the gallery and just walk around in any any kind of exhibition ideal case scenario for us would be you'd walk in you know the headsets are there they're quite comfortable wearing it themselves they can navigate the the, the environment fine and then they would only approach us if you know if and when needed kind of thing but but in terms of hand holding i think that's something we try to ease off in a way over over the few years that we've been doing doing these shows. I think it also has something to do with museum museology museums now because a lot of um I've been teaching at the Art Institute since 2007 and I use the museum as a laboratory. I've made augmented reality apps with all the paintings. I've worked extensively with the curator in chief, who's actually the director of the old museum, um, Gloria Groom. And uh, she and I became friends because she wanted me to do like crazy exhibition design with her. And they wouldn't let us. <laughs> the design you know the design chiefs but meanwhile over these 13 years the her shows become more and more virtual reality experiences and we're used to that you know what i mean that we the paintings are in the original sets and then there's uh projections and all kinds of hyper realizations and that seems natural and so we've learned to look to experience art in mediate in me within a context of mediation we're no longer intimidated by the technology when it comes to experiencing art through it and the way that's changed in the last five years is really quite dramatic exactly and i think it's it's only going to kind of increase you know the, this this um being i guess well versed in in this medium and and the, being exposed to it i think on on a on a kind of mainstream level um it's exciting to see where this will go in a year into I, i don't think we'll have to wait another kind of five years to see another you know leap into 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 it all i think it will obviously happen extremely the development of a, all these platforms of the you know of the technology from i guess creative point of view to begin with from the physical space i think i doubt will go beyond um having you know virtual gallery 
gallery uh, kind of platforms or spaces which have also been picked up by you know various galleries throughout this year and art fairs and all that um i don't see how that how else they can kind of go beyond that i think this is pretty much the limit but in terms of from the creative point of view i think from the artist's point of view it'll be interesting to see what what would come out um in kind of you know the near future and how most importantly we'd be able to hopefully kind of not necessarily create but build on the market for it um if if you know the speed of development would translate into into um actual kind of commercial um uh not weight but viability you know well don't you think that's already happening because of bitcoin yeah i mean yeah yeah i think so it's interesting because this is something that that's quite like an organic step for us to get into the whole um what is it nfts and yeah. and and you know and and i've come across and it's fairly new so i'm taking for me so i'm taking my time in exploring it and really seeing if that's something we can um kind of implement into the gallery through this gazelio or the basement space anyways there's definitely something there and we'll hopefully do something within the next year or so but um it's crazy to see i come i came across this this platform uh which i will remember the name of now but Be- which one people that's the no. one that's done a million dollars worth of business in the past day yeah so this this one was similar but it was crazy to see um it was moving image uh works which were which were sold for over 80,000 and and these kind of artists or creatives you know they don't really have a following as such or a market within the physical world it's 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 very specific to a certain community um so it you know there were names that i haven't heard of necessarily and they were selling for 80,000 100,000 kind of cryptocurrency value right so the idea is okay well if there is such a booming market online um how and does it even translate into the physical market and how you know there's definitely there has to be a crossover here um and that's something that you know we were we were also talking about with you claudia the whole well the gaming side of it the you know initiatives places like um uh, occupy white walls and these kind of gaming kind of environments where again the audience is huge it's ma- it has a massive following perhaps there is that that want to buy and sell and have that transactional element to it as well but whether you know if you if we were to exhibit an artist for example who's doing really well in that in that community if they would have the same you know the same following and actual kind of no they um, wouldn't i mean it's a totally it's first of all it's kitsch it's total kitsch i mean crypto kitties and then and then the the artists like who've been selling on beeple it's like sort of comics ish comics exactly and so it's sort of amazing so it's really about trading it's for traders because it's all about trading things of no value that of actual no value that's it's like a conceptual game yeah about money at this point and i feel like if you start to do things that have more aesthetic and conceptual refinement it'll end up the same thing as the rest of art you know it's not uh it's just not mass yeah see and that's the thing i think that's why but i think it's not only vr i think it's generally kind of any digital work you you have there's there's always that that um uh discussion right whether you know you keep or how do you hold on to that exclusivity element which is so you know kind of supported and 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 we we feed into this idea of it has to be an artwork has to be exclusive if you know if even if it is edition it has to be a very limited edition for it to have any value in the physical world versus the kind of the accessibility that we're talking about which obviously is vr works it's it's like i said you know any kind of i think video work anything that can be streamed can be posted online it's the idea of um does it have to be one or the other or could it be kind of you know still have a mass following it can appeal can be accessible to to a wider audience but that the, the both the pricing side of it the addition side of it the kind of the commerciality of it it's still 
you know, contained within a smaller group of people or a smaller community or not? Or is there a kind of a, a model that we haven't cracked yet, which, you know, appeals to the to the wider audience and it's, uh, you know, a bit more affordable? And... I guess this is something you really have to think about since opening Gazelio and having the online residencies and shifting from Gazelio Art House to Gazelio, having that different branch, all of these questions about authenticity and interaction online is all something that really ties Definitely. into it. Definitely. I mean, the idea, the purpose, I think, of, of creating Gazelio, of, of setting it up uh, uh, five years ago, was to really get in touch with the artists that we wouldn't normally come across, who are, you know, unrepresented, who are, uh, their primary medium is not necessarily virtual, because I think the virtual angle to it came in you know a couple of years into into the um uh, where where in terms of when i say kind of the virtual reality angle where we kind of started focusing specifically on vr um but generally digital medium i think it was it, it's again it's it's tapping into a community that wouldn't we just wouldn't interact with let alone exhibit in the middle of mayfair and it was interesting and still is for, for us to see how we can bridge that you know would how we can kind of expand on expectations generally of a space in the middle of mayfair um that can be also you know a bit experimentive bring in again the artists who you just wouldn't normally see in in the physical space and but more importantly for us it's you know one thing is to actually showcase these artists another thing is actually you know be able to sell for them as well because that's the, the whole point of the gallery in a way for as far as you know to support the artists i think what we found over the years is there are a lot of and it's a great kind of you know great models in terms of support um a lot of grants that are given often institutional support often institutional acquisitions that happen as claudia mentioned you know quite a few i mean with claudia i think it's a it's a whole different ball game because there are institutional you know acquisitions happening there are private collectors that are into 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 her work um but with with uh, you know majority of artists i think working in this in with new media who aren't perhaps, you know, as well known as Claudia or haven't done this for as long. Um, I think there's still, you know, there's still a, a, a lack of um, not connectivity, but but uh, exposure, um, which we're trying to, you know, which we're trying to assist with in a way and and therefore kind of pick up on um, on the market. I think this discussion about mass versus art is perfectly expressed by the project I did with you in your online residency, because I had a website, one of my many websites, I had a Tumblr site that I was using from the Tumblr days. And I used them also to make special uh, abbreviated collections of my work if somebody wants to see uh, for presentations. I I had a Tumblr site for as long as there was Tumblr. So let's say it's 15 years. And I made a new version and it had all my work in it. My early work had a lot of nude women in it that were intervened. They were not photorealists. You know, it's like uh, if you see a Matisse or a Picasso, their style eyes. And I had to make, I wanted to, I was invited to do a presentation. So I put together just those uh, women. I put it on Tumblr and Tumblr much as I didn't understand had been sold to some company where the owner uh, put in force very strict rules about nudity. And I found that the entire site was censored. And it was just at the moment that you asked me to do a residency. So I just took the entire thing and put it on your site. And so it wasn't censored. And exactly. I, I think there you have these two parallel worlds, uh, you know, where we're talking about could they be the same? And I'm not sure about that. There's like, do we want them to be the same? That's another thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. It, it, it I think, goes back to that idea of um, that question of kind of, 
you know what's the intention do we even want it to be yeah i mean i'm sure there's a way to 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 you know bring the two the two types of audiences together and and have a, a more of a in sync kind of you know market i guess but but at the end of the day do you know maybe that the whole point of um having that split is again going back to the creative element of it is that you can create a work which would appeal to that you know wider audience or not or or get censored and then you'd have a, a whole other kind of you know part of the, the whole other part of the art market or the industry or, or beyond that that would appreciate a certain part of, you know a certain type of work differently but tokenizing I mean, allows there to be val uh, collectability assigned to digital work and that a lot of the anxiety was about the infinite fluid reproducibility. So mm. tokenizing allows me to sell a hub's website or, um, and that, or certain mediums like VR, which is a piece of software as, as a unique and protected copyright protected thing. And, and the difference with Occupy White Walls, uh, when I was in dialogue with the owner, was that um, I was expected to give my images to his game for free, public domain, you know, but at the same time, it's like social media, like you build a model for Google Earth, they make a lot of money. Um, the content that's provided in social media by everybody is why people see it and the users don't earn money but facebook sure does and so this is a complicated you know idea about populism and 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 art it's not just about exclusivity about collection collectability mm -hmm. but it's also about uh um a special transformative experience that is personalized, you know, and is not is not that. Because in capitalism, you know, populism does not play out in the favor of artists, some people mm -hmm. put it that way. Exactly. But that's why I think I think going back to developing not necessarily a model, but developing a, a certain it's almost kind of a marketing using using a certain platform or, or, or that that kind of mass appeal as a marketing tool that feeds into. The actual kind of market and and you know the, the the sales as we know it kind of thing with the limited editions with the limited kind of, you know or the exclusive uh, um the exclusivity element that's important i think with 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 the, with the art with the artworks it's themselves um maybe that's how we kind of you know make use of these of these two different worlds mila there's a question for you yeah. on the panel Yes, we have a question in the chat saying, Mila, you mentioned, I think, that the experience could remain on the site beyond the duration of a show. Do you see this as one of the key applications or is this more about the experience of, as artwork? Um, good point. I think it's, it's it, I see it as a, a key application, meaning the, 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 the point for, for us in a way, hubs, what was interesting just to give kind of a bit of a context as well, when Claudia mentioned um, hubs and the idea of doing something in parallel with a physical show at the gallery, at the time, it, uh, another artist we've 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 shown um, at this end of the headset, Simon um, Wilkinson. He was he he mentioned. I just didn't connect the two at the time, but he was talking about this. Um, the, the, the platform and how great it is and how potentially we could do a finissage. And I think at that point we were either in lockdown or about to be in lockdown. So there was definitely a need to have this, this, this kind of virtual environment. And the idea was to have a finissage of the entry to the headset show on that whole platform. So that's how we kind of got to, um, to know it and to, and to, to experiment with it. And then with Claudia, I think that's where it kind of hit home in a way because the idea of, I guess, not using it necessarily as an application where where the experience is, where the experience draws the audience to the physical space and the main experience happens at the physical space. With Claudius' work, what we're doing now, it actually went 
um, beyond that where you can have quite a, a, a self, um, not a self-isolated, but it, it can be the experience that you'll have of Claudius' work on hubs is in a way enough on its own and can exist on its own. I the tried physical, to do that. Like, yeah, which I think you kind of, which I think completely, in, in my opinion, you've, you've nailed it, you know? It was about the level changes. So you start in this oppressive basement with this oppressive game, dark environment, and then you go up into the do into the second floor and it lights up and you see that other thing. And then you go into the, and woo, you know what I mean? It, it It's like uh, Studio 54, crazy. Exactly. And so well, exactly, which you wouldn't have. I mean, the the thing also to note is like you haven't you haven't physically been in the space here. So the whole show was installed. It was opened. It's continuing without without you being here, which was also I think quite an interesting angle, right? Because you you know normally having an artist in the physical space of when we're, we're showing their work, it 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 adds an immense value to you know the, the experience itself, right? Talking about experiences, but in the absence of that, I think being able to have a chat with Claudia even in her avatar of a, of a of an ice cream kind of of an ice cone or whatever um you'd still you you have that added value which you would probably have in a physical space as well so i think it's it's um yeah for us over the course of this show specifically of Claudia's show i think hubs it 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 provided um uh yeah it provides it an additional an additional space in a way for us to work with and in um that will like i said you know go beyond um i think beyond the the this physical show at the gallery once it ends 17th i think we're 18th of jan we're end we're or maybe no yeah i think it's 17th 18th of jan anyways at, beyond that point it's quite nice to to know that you know one would still be able to experience it um on hubs but by the way that's how i make the the um sh all these shows i build a model of the environment and i uh, install it exactly to scale and then um i you know so i could send the pictures to you <laughs> and you knew what to do <laughs> and, completely and it and then um and so yeah right i mean many artists make little paper models of or pastiche you know to hang their shows because shows are installations they're they're sculptures mm. exactly absolutely i think we have six minutes until we're going to get booted off the system so i think we have a 75 minute <laughs> minute rule but is there any more questions that anyone would like to ask in the chat um before we get before it ends i can't see any but I think it is important to reiterate that Mimi's put in the chat um, to go to the Gazelli Art House Lounge and to book an appointment um, until this Friday and then London goes into lockdown um, to see the show. And then after that, from the 4th, you can see it again and book appointments to go and experience Claudia's work in the physical space. And you can actually see what we've been talking about, about the importance of the physical and the com complementary nature of having Mozilla Hubs and the physical um experience. I'd like to add that if people want to surf the the site um first uh, I have at uh, I have a site that's called chamberofdreams.net no, yeah, I'll put it in the chat. So, um, so but that yeah. one is I aggregate all the hubs uh sites and I, I also want to add that to do hubs, you need to use a Chrome browser, and it's better with a mouse than a mouse than a pad. Um, and it doesn't work if you're using Opera or Safari. <laughs> but other than that, you could do. It's easy. Well. Um... I'm so sorry to interrupt. As I said, I will appear magically like uh, the broken fairy. <laughs> uh, of course, we can. Uh, I mean, we thank you so much for this uh, very interactive and interesting conversation. 
I think that um, if you want to come for a second version in January, at the closure of the show, uh, please do and, and welcome. Uh, so, um, is there any other conclusion that you would like to share with us before we leave? Because unfortunately, there are three minutes left and the platform closed. I would very like to thank you. This was, I'm so, uh, I want to thank you both because this was, Mila, wasn't this great that we did this? It was together? fun. Yeah, definitely. We really, really enjoyed it. Thank and you so much. Yes, that you made us do this. It was really a delight and we have <laughs> recording of it and it's wonderful. <laughs> it's been fun. I'm so glad you both enjoyed it. Yes. With two minutes left, I would like to, <laughs> on behalf of the team, I would like to thank you uh, all for coming tonight. And I uh, wish to see you all in a healthy and happy mood back in, in January. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, Yay. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. <laughs> and so, yes, be, be, be nice. <laughs>